Uh, Shiny rear with a delivery, so I'll be back in a tick. Right, we've still got a little bit of messing about to do with some of this pipework insulation. Uh, <laughs> could be peeking through here. Gemma's um, ordered the elements today. Uh, they're coming from a company called TP Phase. Uh, Andy at GC Supplies put us onto them. Um, and we tried to wangle a uh, pickup over the weekend, but unfortunately, uh, their MD, David, was a bit busy and he never managed to get back to me in time for uh, Andy from GC to kindly pick up the elements. So we've ordered them today and they're going to get delivered in a couple of three days' time. So we'll have a look at those when they arrive, but uh, I have it on good authority that they're going to be top notch. So uh, thanks for that, mate. So all I'm doing here is just putting some extra gaffer tape around this insulation and then I'm cutting the insulation exactly where the John Guest connects fit onto the main pipe in such a way that it pulls out. I don't have to wrestle pipes up or down. We're going to move the tank out in that direction so the pipe will disconnect in that direction which will make for smooth removal of the tanks. So we'll give a, a little bit of a test run in a second. Just a couple more pieces to put on. Make sure it's totally airtight. Because what we don't want to happen is for condensation to be forming inside the lagging. You're going to get a little bit, obviously, where we've got access ports for valves and that kind of thing. But the majority of it we want sealed up to keep the lagging dry and if the lagging's kept dry then we don't get any nasties growing in there so we've got an isolation valve here which we just rotate to close off and I now remember these aren't coming out every week we'll be doing this once a month for inspections or something like that but because the tanks are all CIP we don't have to move them often, so we isolate these three valves here and the fourth valve is already the, the motorised valve up there which will be closed by the STC 1000 and then I've lost my screwdriver and then it's just a case of disconnect oh, and look at that we've lost what 20 mil 20 mil of liquid, nothing to worry about at all. Right, after a bit of wrestling, we've got that bad boy off. And uh, yeah, all we have to do really is um, disconnect this cable, but there's no need, plus I've made them long enough. We'll just have to slide him out, and there we go. We're in a position to service everything now. Just have to secure these pipes a little bit better than they are. And uh, once I've wrapped these other ones up, this section's completed, and then all we have to do is think about uh, getting the glycol in. Best I've found it, it monopropylene glycol is £126 for 40 litres on eBay. Don't think I want to beat it, so uh, we'll order 40 litres of that and see if we can't run a 50 50 mix and uh, see if that'll get us down to about minus five, minus six, which should be cold enough to, uh, to chill these bad boys. Right now, I'm sorting out the, uh, the reservoir box for the glycol and I'm putting the temperature probe in there, but what I don't want is the temp probe touching the sides, the bottom, or the evaporator, which will throw off the reading massively. So I've got some scrap metal out of the scrap metal bin, Look, a few strips of stainless steel, and I've made like a little cage. And all I'm gonna do is just locate the probe inside there, the probe 
is dangling in the inside of there it's unable to come into contact with any of the side walls of the container thus allowing me to get an accurate reading of the temperature in the container <laughs> oh what am I like there we go I think that's not three bad that and uh, yeah I'm just gonna drop it in so now obviously it can't really bump into anything can it so he's sat on the bottom the probes elevated from the base which is what we want really and uh, oh yeah she'll read a good temp and then I'm not gonna fill this box with any more foam now I've got it nice and tight around the lid all the fittings sit in there nicely I've actually got some of the old uh, fiberglass insulation, the rock wool insulation left over from when we clad the tanks. I'm just going to whack this on top, cut a nice fitting lid and then stick it on top. So basically this can act as a little table in the interim, you know, or put stuff on it uh, on a brew day. But uh, other than that, we're not really going to have to get inside here. Unless we have to top the glycol up or check the levels once a month or so. Generally they are maintenance free, they're good in that respect. So, chuck some rock wool on, make a lid, and then I'm finished with this. Right, after several little jobs, already achieved, what I'm going to do now is put in a cold water supply for the HLT, so we can charge her up off the mains. So I've isolated this supply, there should be a little bit of water in there. Of course, we've just got to chop into this ear of pipe, just like that. Oh yeah, these shears are worth the weight in gold. And then I've got a tea piece. And plastic pipe across. Listen to that, boys. We've got the frigging pipe working, it's filling up. And I'll show you that in just a second, though. But uh, in order to get the beer out of the tank, I've made myself a little filter with some perforated mesh and uh, a massive fitting on the end, which I can use to in the future step down to a half inch BSP fitting or that's one inch outlet so we can just use a one inch outlet so I've got options with this so I'm just putting a little bit of pickling paste on that so not really necessary if I'm honest but uh, I've had to bash this about a little bit on the on the vise to get it into shape and it was the only piece of perforated mesh that I had um, so hopefully it will work pleased with this it's full to the brim it did take over an hour to fill though off of the mains so thank god we've got a cold liquor tank so obviously we can charge the tanks up the day before without having to wait around to draw off the mains which well simply I don't have over an hour every day while I'm brewing to stand around and wait for a tank to fill up so now what we're going to do is see what the transfer time is from the HLT to the boil kettle. I mean, we're never gonna do that in practice. It'll go via the mash tun, of course. But what I wanna do is fill it up and have a look at that Whirlpool port as well. So we'll get her rigged up and get her turned on. This bit of a bodger, it's quite a big look, size of my arm almost, he says. Um, this will slide in there, hopefully. 
and B, oh yes, our filter for the boil kettle. These half inch ball valves are courtesy of Andy at GC. Again, thanks a lot, dude. And uh, funnily enough, so is this RJT spanner. I don't know where I'd be without that chap. He really is a top fella. So what I'm gonna do is just tighten this bad boy up now. Just comfortably. I think I'll have that facing the vertical like that. It's easier to, you know, the, uh, the lock on the handle automatically engages that way, which is a nice little safety feature. Uh, just have to attach a snap lock fitting on the end, the valve's closed and tightened underneath, so we're ready to go and do the transfer. So this is the speed that we've got on the boil kettle whirlpool arm. It's creating a whirlpool of sorts. But the problem is it's a one inch outlet and I'm running it through a half inch pipe. Hello mate. There we go, we just had someone come in, but as I was saying, I could just throttle that one inch outlet down a little bit, down to half inch, and then of course we'd get a nice powerful jet coming out of there. But as it is, I don't think there's any real need to, because once we get the pump and all the pipe work up to one inch, uh, uh, one inch hygienic pipe, we're going to be laughing anyway because it's going to be coming out of a one and a half inch RJT fitting on the pump so we should have the power on the other pump but uh, the transfer into here is a heck of a lot quicker than the transfer on the mains. Just like that, we filled up three tanks, one after another, and the water is now in the fermenter. And, well, here's the level. Can we see? So this is just over a finger away from the top. Almost. Yeah, you see what I mean anyway, don't you? And uh, in the boil, it was there which is half a finger from the top. So we kind of know what the volumes are gonna look like. If I'm literally brimming it in the boil kettle, well, I'll be brimming it in the fermenter. So I have to be really quite careful because we're gonna end up with lots and lots of yeasty poos all crawling up and out. Still struggling with a remedy for the lid. Try something a little bit different today by stapling some uh, silicon gasket on there, which is like a half round, if you know what I mean. Well, it was a U section, but didn't really quite work. I think we're gonna run with, with the neoprene. We just need a good tie down system to squash the lid solidly onto, onto the neoprene. Same there, look. So I'll come up with a solution. I've got myself a shopping list and on that shopping list is some 30 mil by 20 mil box section or 30 by 15, depending on what I decide to go for in the end. And what I'm hoping to do with this is create like a grid 
and then some flip up clamps that stay out of the way with a screw on the top so you insert one end in flop it down lift it up screw it on triple action and it bolts the whole lid down every single section that's the plan anyway right time is approaching 10 past 7 I have to go home because I'm freaking tired so closer every day closer every day we'll see how close we get tomorrow we'll see you then